I do believe we have quorum. Is that correct? Lisa, are you speaking to us? You're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we do have quorum. And uh, before you jump in, I just wanted to let you know that Mike Daw is here um, attending on behalf of Erica. And I wanted to introduce Sarah Gurney to the group, um, your, your new Measure, Measure Y committee member. And I'll um, hand it over to you, Yvette. Okay, since we have quorum, we're going to go ahead and get started. And so we're going to go ahead and take roll call. And can I hear a verbal, please? Tim? Here. Janice? Hey. Janice? I think Janice was is here. Maybe she's muted. Can she you hear me now? Yes, yep. we can. Oh, good. My computer keeps trying to kick me out again. I don't know what it is with this connection. Uh, so hopefully this is going to work. I'm not touching any buttons. <laughs> Sarah? Here. Charlene? Here. Barbara? Here. Yvette, and I am present. Mike? Here. And I do, so we still have vacancies. Did I miss anyone? Okay. And I'm your liaison from the commission. This is Deborah Doyle. And someone okay. just joined. Kellen? Kellen? Yeah. Oh, the auditor. Okay. Okay. Let the re records reflect that we have everyone that is on the commission, oh, sorry, committee is present. And we're gonna go ahead and move to announcements. Are there any announcements at this time? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move to item three, public appearances. Members of the public who wish to address the committee regarding matters not on the agenda should request recognition at this time, pursuant to the above described protocols. See also guidelines for public appearances in the general information section below. Is there anyone present at this time? I do not see any members of the public in attendance and there were no comments received via email. Okay. So at this time, we're gonna go into section four discussion, the audit of the fiscal year. I will go ahead and turn that into the hands of Myrna. So good afternoon, uh, committee members. I want to introduce uh, Kellen, from Presinti and Brinker, our um, auditing firm that audited our financial statements for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. And um, I'm delighted to hear that uh, we had a clean audit, unqualified. And thank you, Kellen, for being here and presenting this important information to our Measure Y Oversight Committee today. Uh, thank you, Mirna. Um, as she just said, my name is Kellen Gilbert. I'm the lead uh, audit partner at Piscini and Brinker. Uh, thank you. I've got a brief slideshow for you. Uh, let me just get this. I think I'm sharing the wrong one. Here we go. Is everybody seeing my uh, presentation? Yes. yes. Great, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so just a little bit more information about the audit team. As I already said, I'm Kellen Gilbert. Brett Bradford is the independent report reviewer. He has 
over 20 years of accounting experience. Uh, Alyssa Foster was the audit senior and Gina Roach was the audit associate on the engagement. Uh, I always start with this slide just because I think it's helpful to remind everybody what the relative roles and responsibilities are for the financial statements. <clears throat> so management is responsible for uh, maintaining all the information within the financial statements, all the financial data, uh, maintaining compliance specifically for Measure Y, uh, and establishing an, a system of internal control over the financial data and compliance for Measure Y. Uh, we are the auditors are responsible for conducting our audit and for uh, providing our opinion on whether or not the financial statements are free of material misstatement and whether or not there were any material non-compliance <clears throat> issues. Uh, we do that by what we call a risk-based audit approach, which means we evaluate the significant risks within the audit and <clears throat> adjust our procedures accordingly. Uh, we consider things like uh, internal controls, um, the overall um, <clears throat> level of funding being provided by the Measure Y, uh, <clears throat> macro and microeconomic situations. Uh, those are all the different things that we consider when we are doing a risk-based approach. Uh, we then perform a series of year-end tests over uh, account balances and also over Measure Y expenditures looking for compliance with Measure Y. Uh, and then we also evaluate the adequacy of disclosures within the financial statements. Just uh, some high level financial highlights, uh, total assets and deferred outflows exceeded total liabilities and deferred inflows by approximately 32 million at the end of the fiscal year, which was an increase of approximately 8.5 million. Uh, specifically, the Measure Y fund balance increased by 4.2 million and has an ending fund balance of approximately 21.2 million. And the total net position, uh, really just a, a a useful quick figure to look at to see how the overall health of the organization is doing. Uh, if you look at the five-year period ending June 30, 2022, uh, it's increased by approximately 38.8 million over that time frame. So a pretty significant and healthy increase from where it was prior to that. And this is just a, a very rough idea of where we spend our time during the audit. Cash and investments is an, always an area that we're going to be looking at, uh, not only due to the size, but the liquidity related to cash. So we always want to make sure that uh, there's adequate controls over cash and that cash is uh, confirmed independently with third parties. Uh, accounts receivable and revenue recognition, always another area that we're, we're going to look at closely. Um, the financial statement presentation disclosure, you can see that that's overall the largest area where we spend our time. We want to make sure that those uh, all the required disclosures are there and that the financial statements follow both GAAP and the GASB to make sure that those are being presented uh, correctly. Uh, accounts payable and other liabilities, uh, the pension and OPEB, uh, two areas that are, are large for the library that we spend combined about 25% of our time. Uh, and the Measure Y compliance, about 15% of our time and new this year is the Government Accounting Standards Board uh, number 87 implementation, which I'm going to speak to uh, in the next slide. That was about 15% of our time. <clears throat> so the, uh, during 2022, the library implemented a new uh, standard. As I said, the, the GASB statement number 87 which is on leases. And what the GASB was attempting to do was to uh, take certain transactions and, and essentially liabilities that were we would call uh, off balance sheet or uh, off the statement of net position for a government's um, <clears throat> balance sheet. Uh, it used to be disclosed, but not something that was actually recorded on the balance sheet or the statement of net position. And so that has changed with GASB 87 and the for-profit equivalent um, of 842, we are now capturing and, and putting onto the balance sheet a, uh, a non-current 
uh, intangible right to use asset and a corresponding lease liability uh, to basically recognize that commitment to the leaseor. Uh, and then also to recognize the right of the library to use the um, leased asset. So the adoption of the standard created a not, as I just said, a non-current asset um, and a corresponding lease liability of approximately 6 .2, 6.8 million at June 30, 2022. Um, so again, that was a commitment that was previously outstanding uh, prior to this GASB being implemented, but now it's gonna be showing up on the statement of net position, whereas before it would just be in the note disclosure. For Measure Y uh, compliance specifically, I know it's important to this committee. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we test Measure Y expenditures to make sure that they are in compliance with the Measure Y ballot um, and the Sonoma County Library Maintenance Restoration and Enhancement Act that was approved by the commission. Uh, we use the actual ballot measure and that act to really be our guide rails for what are allowable um, expenditures under the Measure Y program. And I just want to be really uh, clear about this. We do not evaluate the effectiveness or the accomplishments of Measure Y. We don't look at the allocation of expenditures between the Measure Y fund and the general fund to determine reasonableness or anything in that nature. We are simply looking to make sure that these expenditures are allowable in accordance with the measure any sort of an analysis of, of whether or not it's the best use of the Measure Y funds, that is a function of management and is not uh, the place of the auditor. We're really just here to say, yes, this is allowable or no, this is not allowable. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Um, I believe in the wording of Measure Y, it, it says something to the effect that the Measure Y fund should not replace the, the general funds derived from the property tax. So how, how, how would you determine that aspect? So from, from that aspect, we, that's, we want to make sure that uh, there's, if there's an ongoing level of effort within the general fund to pay for costs, we want to make sure that they're not um, completely stopping um, expenditures of that nature and then only applying the measure Y costs, basically saying we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna keep this branch open other than uh, to only use the measure Y funds that they're not starving a specific aspect um, of the library of those general funds um, and only using the measure Y funds that that's I know that's a little bit um, nuanced compared to what I just said, um, but essentially it's a determination to make sure that they're not um, not uh, ending one program and ending all funding for that program except for those Measure Y funds. <clears throat> um, but that doesn't mean that those Measure Y funds can't be used uh, extensively or explicitly for um, allowable costs under the the ballot measure. So that was a whole lot of accounting, uh, accounting speak to say that 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 is a, a nuanced question, um, and and really we're looking for uh, board minutes or any sort of indication saying that um, they would be they would stop using uh, the general fund um, revenues. Uh, for a specific purpose and only use the Measure Y fund, which we did not note anything of that nature. Okay, thank you. So it's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so allowable costs in accordance with uh, section C and D uh, of the plan, uh, cost to maintain existing libraries, improvements uh, for services at existing libraries, uh, cost for updating uh, library facilities, uh, costs for supporting library programs uh, and costs to improve access to libraries. So uh, just to circle back on that question, um, given the broad definition of what the Measure Y funds can be used for, uh, that does create a little bit of trickiness and a little bit of um, you know, contradiction within the measure itself. Uh, you do often see in um, ballot measures, a statement to say that these are not to um, 
replace existing funds, usually that's when one government is then subsidizing another government agency and they want to make sure that they're not pulling back on the funding that they are already providing. It's a little bit more unusual given that the measure Y is going to the library and so is the general fund. So it would be basically taking from one fund to another fund um, as opposed from where you typically see that language, which would be from one government to another government agency. Uh, and again, with the broad definition of what's allowable, um, it's it's going to be the vast majority of the uh, activities that the library is currently carrying out. Uh, so in conclusion, we did issue an unqualified opinion, which means that the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with uh, generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, and in our um, government accounting standards report, <clears throat> our report on compliance, there were no uh, reportable instances of material non-compliance or, uh, excuse me, uh, non-compliance or material weaknesses in internal controls over compliance. Uh, this last slide is just um, required communications. Basically, these are things that we, the professional standards require that we communicate to those charged with governance uh, to let you know that we did not identify any fraud, illegal acts, or significant or unusual transactions that we were unsure of how to account for. Um, and I always like to point out that had we uh, identified any of those things, we would have let management know long before these um, end of audit presentations um, we would go to management and uh, and the commission right away if we did find anything of this nature. And with that, if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. So we do not have to approve that, right? We just was looking at the audit. We don't have to do any um, votes on that, correct? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's more All information right. for us to deal with. Okay, thank you. Moving on to item 4.2. Myrna? Trying to move. There we go. Okay. Um, so I will be presenting the fiscal year 22-23 mid-year financial report, and I have a slideshow. Are you seeing my slides only? No, I'm not yet. Oh, so I need to share. Share those. Yay. Okay. What do you see? Do you see my notes? The presentation Your slide. The presentation. Okay, excellent. Okay. So um uh the following report shows um a mid-year uh financial report as of 1231-22 is just six months into the fiscal year. Um, you know, and our strategic plan sets priorities for our budget. And I'm going to give you an overall uh, report of both our property tax general fund and uh, sales tax measure Y. Uh, so you get a full picture of um are of the stat of the financial status of the library for this fiscal year. There are three priority concepts that give the library purpose and a pathway to build a stronger community that resonate with me uh, that are listed in the reimagining plan. And those are provide opportunities for all to learn, contribute, interact, and participate. Uh, support resiliency foster racial equity, social justice, and inclusion for everyone. 
A mid-year review has three components to visit the financial status of the library and make any needed adjustments. These include year-end projections for revenues and expenditures, a financial health check, are we on track with revenues and expenditures, cash balance and fund balance, and a look ahead, how do we stay on track uh, uh, for a strong financial position for fiscal year 23 and continue to advance the reimagining plan. The good news is that the library continues to have a strong financial position to advance the reimagining plan. The strong financial position is supported by the following. The library received a clean audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022, and it showed an improved net financial position from the prior year and revenues were greater than budgeted and assets increased as presented um, by our auditor just a few minutes ago. The Finance Committee and Commission continue to have strong oversight and see monthly financial reports. And these reports for the remaining months should remain consistent and provide information that is expected, um, which are our holiday sales receipts and our April property tax receipts. And the strong financial position are a result of the following steady increases in revenue receipts from prior years, financial discipline controls and policies are in place. We continue to review and update policies and procedures. The library has strong cash and fund balances and a fully funded stabilization fund. This is a summary of revenue since the full, first full year of the sales tax receipts in 2017-18 are consistent and, and show steady increases from year to year. Um, in fisc from fiscal year 22, there was an 8% increase from the prior year. The library is on track and within budget for fiscal year 2023. As a reminder, um, the, the um, commission uh, adjusted the budget in October and approved uh, rolling over capital funds from uh, and also books, subscriptions uh, from the prior year. And so expenditures increased with this budget adjustment by $596,000 approximately. I'm in for the mid year, I uh, have made recommendations to the commission to make adjustments to property tax revenue. The library received um, the certified values from the for property taxes from the tax collector in November, and property taxes are projected to come in greater than the approved budget uh, in June by $1.2 million. Plus, there is a projected increase in donations and grants for a total increase um, of $1.4 million uh, for, the, for, June, uh, for the year ending June 30th, 2022. Under sales track, sales track, a uh, sales tax are on track as you know, sales tax receipts um, are, have a two month lag before we receive them. And the total revenue to date is $5.4 million, which represents four months of revenue, July through October. And we've received, this represents 35% of the revenue target. On average, the library has received about $1.3 million per month this year, and taking into account the monthly receipts through December, and assuming that, re that the remaining eight months are average, 
the library is on track to receive $15.5 million to $15.8 million by June 30th, 2023. February will be uh, our, the receipts that we receive in February will be an indicator of our holidays uh, and uh, sales tax going forward. Under expenditures, um, while expenditures um, represent six months or 50% of the fiscal year, the sales tax receipts, um, which uh, you did receive um, a, a, an itemized um, list of expenditures under sales tax, um, represent 50% of the fiscal year or six months. Uh, and sales tax receipts to date are 35% of the budgeted revenue. This does reflect our historical trend where revenues are greater than, I mean, where expenditures are greater than our revenues at this time of the year. Um, and as of December 31st, 2022, the variance under sales tax was $1.1 million. And this variance closes as we approach the fourth quarter and we receive most of our actual revenue and um, we post the last two months um, in, on our books. When it comes to salaries and benefits, we expect to be within budget and um, under, uh, un under salaries and benefits, the library re has requested to the commission uh, to make two, two adjustments to positions. One is to add one uh, position of administrative specialist to assist the fund development um, division and a reclassification uh, for the training and development specialist to a senior human resources specialist. Um, altogether, that would be a $55,000 increase to uh, salaries and benefits. Under human resources, um, services and supplies will, will offset the reclassification uh, for that position. Uh, under expenditures, I am not uh, making any recommendations to adjust the budget, but I would like to note that considering the historical and the current spending rates uh, for services and supplies and my discussions with uh, uh, division managers um, is um, that there will be a savings in services and supplies. So I just noted here that, um, that there will be approximately a $500,000 uh, savings in services and supplies. These funds are still available to division managers to spend, uh, but um, given the history and our current spending rate, um, there's a likelihood that we will see savings there. Under capital expenditures, um, the budget calls for uh, $7.1 million in capital expenditures. However, we've only spent 6% of that. Um, and um, again, in my discussions with the facilities manager, we do expect um, to spend $1.3 million in capital. The reason for this is that there has been uh, major delays to the Petaluma refresh, as well as the Healdsburg refresh. And these are scheduled to roll over into next year. Um, if we look at the actuals expenditures under capital expenses, which the this committee has um, noted in the past, I've done a calculation and given our allocation policy, 90% um, of uh, these expenditures are covered by Measure Y and 10% are covered by property tax. And together um, with revenue increases in property tax and savings in services and supplies and capital, uh, there, 
there will be a, a result uh, in in a fund balance that will be adjusted uh, when the commission, if the commission does approve my recommendations. Here's a, the financial health check uh, for our cash balance. And this slide illustrates the nature of our revenue. Um, just quickly, our, the blue line is the property tax uh, cycle. And uh, you do see spike here, um, which is the December receipts uh, for property tax, which was over $13 million in, um, in December. The red line is pretty consistent because we receive um, re, uh, sales tax receipts on a monthly basis. And there has been a slight increase over the year, which is a normal revenue trend for the library. And this uh, green line is the total uh, cash balances for these two funds for a total of $40.5 million. For the fund balance, which is uncommitted, um, as we have discussed in the past, uh, the fund balance is made up of committed funds and uncommitted funds. The uncommitted means that these are these funds are available for budgeting uh, by the commission. And as you can see, um, the blue line is the property tax fund balance. And the red line is the sales tax fund balance. Um, and it shows here in the middle, it is the fund balance for that uh, for measure Y increased between the years of 1920 and 2021. And this represents a spike during the pandemic. And the reasons for this was that we scaled back on programming, in-person programming. We scaled back on capital projects and therefore our revenues uh, decreased. And on the flip, on the revenue side, on the flip side, uh, revenues were pretty consistent. And um, the, so therefore there was a surplus recorded in those years that uh, created these spikes in the fund balance. Since then, the library has been building back those services and um, increased expenditures and you and has used the fund balance uh, for uh, building back our services. In addition, the commission has fully implemented its fund balance policy to set aside funds or commit funds towards the capital improvement program, IT and facilities for major um, expenditures. And therefore, um, you could see this dramatic decrease in the uncommitted fund balance. Um, and the next slide, I will show the numbers um, for that uh, graph. And um, it shows that for fiscal year 22-23, we have uh, estimated a $15.6 million combined fund balance, which uh, broken down would be 8.2 million for measure Y and 7.3 million under property tax. So to recap, uh, we are on track of uh, projecting to end the year within our, uh, our expenditures and uh, an improved outlook for revenue. And on the fiscal health check, we have healthy cash balances and a healthy fund balance. Looking ahead, in uh, looking a little bit back and a little ahead, uh, our uh, accomplishments for this fiscal year to date, we've uh, now have established an annual mid-year review we have a clean audited financial statements. We hired 
uh, an accounting manager. Her name is Julie Brown. And we have automated our procurement process. My priorities going forward for the remainder of this year is to complete a five-year forecast, uh, ongoing review of internal controls, updating our policies and procedures, such as cash, traveling, and reporting to our friends' uh, partners, training for finance staff, and uh, to continue to work uh, toward a solid foundation for developing next year's budget to support the reimagining plan and the commission's vision. And of course, um, the, the uh, measure Y uh, expenditures under, its, under, under the ordinance. That concludes my presentation and we'll take any questions. One, one quick question, Myrna, on the... Uh... Uh, revenues, the, I know that we're, we're delayed two months of getting them. Do we just get them at the end of the year or do we get two months from the previous year in this year? So in a finance and accounting world, what happens is that um, the agency, the library books a revenue or an accounts receivable. So we have our best estimate as to what we expect for those last two months and when the funds are received, they are recorded in the correct fiscal year. So that okay. would be okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I have. I have another question. Um, first of all, I'm I'm so pleased to see how healthy the overall position of the library is. Um, do you um, hear anything or, or do you, does any advisor tell you to be more careful with the rest of the this year with the sales tax um, revenue because of the problems with the stock market and a possible recession and, and so on? Very good question. I have been doing a lot of uh, research um, and used um, consultants that um, with the and partner with the county to look at our revenues for this year and um, they the revenues for this year are pretty consistent uh, with our with our targeted uh, revenues of 15.5 million in sales tax so at this time I don't have um, any reason to think that we will uh, that we will miss our target of 15.5 million for this year's budget. Um, in terms of uh, what could happen in the future, um, there's there's been really good uh, report on a labor report on uh, unemployment is still very low. Um, and uh, our uh, our sales tax receipts have been very consistent. And um, so if there is um, anything that I would uh, caution is that um, for next fiscal year, my projections <coughs> um, will lean to be a little more conservative. So historically we've been receiving like greater than 6% uh, increases year to year in measure Y. And I believe that <coughs> and up to 10% uh, or 8%, like I shared earlier uh, from the prior year. So I believe that there will be some somewhere on the lower end of that projecting out for next fiscal year. Okay, so sounds good. Uh, my second question is, um, we we had a lot of discussion in the last two meetings, I think, about the allocation policy between Measure Y and the um, general fund or the, the property tax fund. So I was kind of expecting to see something today that would have those kinds of... <coughs> um, so what I could, uh, I could share this one screen, I know, what falls really nicely um, on the on the on the high level um, 
what I, I wanted to show was the, the, and the one areas that you all <coughs> have noted is in the capital. And um, I don't know if I could share my screen again. I don't know why I can't. You still are sharing screen. Oh, yeah. oh okay, I'll stop share and share again. <laughs> And it looks like that it's been implemented, you know, the percentages, right, Arna? Yes, they are being yeah. uh, uh, implemented. Uh, right. So you, you can see this, this, um, this table here for capital, the total mm -hmm. expenditures uh, that are reported um, are 407,000. Uh, the sales tax has, uh, the sales tax has paid 366,000 right. of that and property tax $40,000 $40, of that. And if you do the calculation, it does break down to the exactly. 90% percent. Um, I, in the next one, I could break down, in your next meeting, I could break down um, further the, um, you know, by division. It's just, it may not, it, you know, we, I could sh demonstrate some examples for by division to show that breakdown as well. It, it looks like that the materials were also split 60-40 the way that uh, was approved, right? Um, when you look at the high level, it will not break down so neatly because it's, it's a roll up, right? In some divisions, uh, administrative divisions, we apply a 90-10 a split and uh, for the disoriented divisions, it's a 60-40 split. So all combined, it's not going to uh, break down that way in the um, financials that have been provided to you already. There would have to be some additional drilling down by division for you to see that, which I, I can do for you next time. Well, no, I, what I was talking about is uh, books and materials. And that looked, the, I can't oh, yeah, books that's and exactly 40%. Yeah, books and materials should split up very nicely as well. Yeah, and so I assume the rest of services and supplies is also. Well, that's what I mean. It, it oh. uh, because okay. the the books subscription line predominantly is um, in the collections division, and it right. doesn't mix in any admin divisions. Then it's it's clean. I, I I don't know if I'm making myself clear. When I when I roll up all the all the services and supplies, we're mixing in all the divisions. And, right. you know, as some have a 90-10 split, others have 60-40 split. Right. Now, um, there was, though, a big um, surplus of unspent capital money at the end of last year. Um, and now we, we are going to have, um, a, a, you know, a, a surplus again this year. Um, in the sales tax um, revenue over expenditures. Um, do you know if, if the planned, um, if there's a plan to make more, to draw those down, especially now that the, the refresh in Healdsburg and Petaluma are in effect postponed? Um, um, well, I've been looking at this area uh, to implement a procedure that um, for for budgeting and allocating funds to within our capital improvement program, and the part of the problem has been um, that when we identify a project, we allocate one hundred percent of that identified cost. So if your project, let's say just plainly for, for um, illustration purposes, you know, Petaluma will be $3 million. We would allocate all those funds in, in this year because we thought we were going to start it this year. But realistically, we know that that project, or in reality, we know that that project will straddle two fiscal years. And right. so um, for next fiscal year, my plan is to uh, delineate what the timeline is for a project and only allocate um, the funds that will be spent in the current fiscal year. And 
if next year the project continues, allocate whatever work will be done for the, the respective fiscal year. And that way, um, the budget will reflect the true or better reflect um, the timeline for that construction timeline for that project. That's part of the, the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you know, we're, we are dependent also on our JPA partners and we cannot start projects without, um, in a lot of cases, without their uh, consent and readiness because you know, they, they may be responsible for certain aspects of the project and they're just in, uh, our roles are just intertwined so much that uh, we have to wait until our partner is ready and available to, to start the construction. Yeah, that's a good point, I, I understand. Um, just to, for the rest of the committee, I mean, what, what I'm kind of envisioning is down the line, uh, suppose some taxpayer um, watchdog group um, would say to me, how, how do you justify us continuing this tax rate when every year you are getting a bigger and bigger um, surplus that isn't being spent? And well, as you can see, if you can recall that slide, that has a, a line, it shows that we have been using our, um, our fund balance. And um, um, so we, we, that is another question for the commission and the commission has, uh, is very interested uh, looking at one-time investments of those funds that benefit the library. Um, so there will be future discussions around that, the fund balance. Uh, we're, we're working on a five-year forecast to um, illustrate our operating costs and what, what those would look like for the next five years and the impact on the fund balance so that the commission is um, informed on uh, what the what their opportunities are for fully utilizing the fund the the uncommitted fund balance and uh, question of course they're not only informed they'll be presented with options <laughs> yes they will be presented with options okay so okay. I realize it this is really um, beyond your your role that it's really the um, the other administrators who would have to decide to perhaps add a third refresh project or in, in some way address that, um, make use of that, um, that surplus. Okay, thank you very much. I, I think your concern is valid though, Charlene, because sooner or later we have to go back to renew the, the sales tax and you've got to explain why we haven't used the money. Right. And, you know, I do believe that you know, all of us are, you know, have an interest that are the best interest for the library in mind. Um, I, I believe that if there's if there's a, a way or a presentation that you would like as oversight committee um, to to partner with the library on certain areas and you know, I am more than happy to meet with your chair and and help you uh, develop something that, um, you know, could be part of your review, your annual report or, you know, your a future meeting. Um, the um, the excess need not only be spent on capital expenses, right? They can be uh, materials, books, et cetera, just so that it's one time expenses. Right. Uh, the recommendation is to uh, apply and apply or invest the available fund balance to one-time um, expenditures, since they are of one-time nature. That's the that's the the recommendation for a best practice. But there's no requirement for that. Well, and it's common sense, I think. But it, but it doesn't only need to be on capital expenses. That is correct. Okay. 
Thank you. I just want to take a moment to see if Janice have any comments or questions. Uh, no, but let me tell you, it's extremely difficult just to do it over the phone and not know <laughs> what page you're on. <laughs> it, it is a, my computer, for whatever reason, um, it t tells me my internet is unsupported, and it just happens at this time of day. So I apologize for that. I just wanted to make sure you had an opportunity if you had something to say. No, I, I'm fine. Okay, thank you. Are there any additional comments or questions? Um, great presentation. Yes. Yes. I, I have a question regarding our, our timeline. We're meeting again in April. When is our report due? Well, if we do it on the previous schedule, we should have it for the November uh, commission meeting this year. We were late this year, but for next year, we should be in the November commission. Okay. And we could definitely discuss that because one of the problems we have, people are, um, you know, going in and out of town. And so that was what the holdup was, was making sure we have people available to do the report. So that is definitely a conversation we can have to see who will be on board to um, help us in that process. So anybody who wants to do that, let me know. I'm glad I would be happy to put you on board. But at this time, if nothing else, we like to move into uh, 4.3, our in-person meeting. So at this point, we need to figure out, per our governor, we have to go back to in-person. And so in the past, it was at Central Library. So I want to ask the group as a whole, do you want to go back to the central library? What are some recommendations? And that's where we'll start. Where would you like to go? I'll start with Mike and go around the room. I mean, the uh, central library is probably the more central to everybody. <laughs> right. right, I mean, because Roanoke Park is not very convenient for a lot of people. Okay, Barbara. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, I agree with Central Library. I think that's that's probably the best location. I would just ask if we could do it a little bit earlier. Um, I, in the in the winter months, I am not driving at night, so it would be difficult for me to to, to drive home from there from a four o'clock meeting. Okay, Charlene. Uh, I agree. The Central Library makes sense. Um, will Will this be a hybrid meeting where? Someone can can participate by by Zoom if they can't make there it. There is Zoom. some language for that, and so we would have to discuss that. We would have to publish that, and then, from my knowledge, we would have to publish where you're going to be for the meeting. Uh -huh. So, an address and so forth. Is that correct, uh, Lisa? Yes. Um, thank you for asking. Uh, we are going to have a presentation from our legal counsel at the March 1 commission meeting about the new meeting procedures, including the um, cases in which people can uh, participate virtually. And so I think um, we'll just wait until that presentation rolls out before we then um, put it out to the group. There are some instances, um, you know, emergency or or otherwise, but I would um, prefer to reserve that for after the presentation. That makes sense. Okay, so we will revisit that topic for sure. Uh, Tim? Uh, just as an aside, I attended a meeting by phone from 2 a.m., in uh, Bilbao, Spain once on the commission. Uh, anyway, I had to put a sign outside the hotel that there was a meeting. Uh, I'm fine with Central. I can go anywhere pretty much. Okay, Sarah? Uh, Central is fine with me. I'm wondering if we could test um, when the commission is actually uh, getting that information to them and maybe we all might tune in to that part of their meeting. So we hear what the governor says we can and cannot do. 
<laughs> and so Lisa, she does send us that information. Yeah. So can Lisa, when that it happens, can you just make a notation? Hey, community members, can you check out this meeting, you know, and just give us a heads up? Yes, I post the agenda packet the Friday before the meeting, and I believe the Measure Y committee members are on my list, but I'll double check and make sure you get the agenda packet, and and then that way you, you can attend. Um, it is going to be in person in Broner Park, so if you're not able to attend, I know we're going to be recording the meetings, so you might listen to the recording and I can even let you know the part of the meeting where you wanna focus in on. Thank so you, Lisa. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Are those meetings not live streamed then? <sighs> Mike, are you able to answer that? Uh, yes, they will be live streamed on Zoom. So they will be recorded on Zoom just as they are now uh, live streamed and they'll be posted on YouTube uh, for viewing at a later time as well. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, Mike, while you're while you have the floor, do you do you see Central Library as an adequate spot for the Measure Y committee meetings? I think we need to talk about the recordings for the various committees, um, what level that needs to be, and that's part of what uh, Council will be determining um, for a committee of this size. I think the central boardroom would be a fine place. That's probably where it's been held in the past. We used to have commission meetings in there as well. Um, that would be my first suggestion. Uh, again, for this size of a committee, there's also the central uh, forum room, community room as well. So that's fine. The one limiting factor with central is always parking. Uh, I think you probably all already know that though. Yes. And, okay, go ahead, Janice. Uh, yes, I'm just pleased to be meeting in person again and uh, eliminating computer issues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did I miss anyone? And then for myself, I'm I'm fine with the majority. And so I do have a quick, did I miss anyone? First of all, Janet, uh, somebody just popped up. Okay. Am I missing anyone? Did I get everyone? Okay, and so Mike, this is a question for you. I know we have to delve a little bit more into that, but if we do decide to have, continue to stay at Central, will we have the avail availability to have the meetings recorded as well? So that is something I am posing to you moving forward because we have had some of that at Central in the past. And so I definitely want to continue to have the meetings recorded so it's available to the public. At some level or another, yes, they can be, whether it be in any of our meeting rooms around the county, they all have um, uh, options for video conferencing. It won't be as face-to-face -face as this Zoom, but it will certainly catch the, the body of the meeting as well as the audio for, from that. And also again for Mike, and we will have someone manning all of that for us, correct? Oh, uh, that would be Lisa. Okay, <laughs> just want to confirm. Okay, are there any other additional questions or comments? Do we this have a date meeting in April? Yes. Again, Janice? Do we have a date for that meeting in April yet? Yes, we do. It's April 24th, which will be in person, correct? Lisa? Yes, that is correct. It will be at Central, April 24th, 2023 at 4 p.m. <clears throat> but we had a request to start earlier. Well, we just got through doing our doodle. <laughs> 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 and so, uh, Lisa, is that it was tough getting this time? <laughs> it was tough getting this time, yes. And I'm I'm hopeful that, you know, it's starting to get, you know, it's starting to stay lighter later. And I think we might have our time change by then. So I, I feel confident that it's it's you wouldn't be driving back home in the dark. Good point. It's the yep. it's a fall okay. meeting, then it might be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But we do have the option, you know, hopefully by March, we'll have a little bit more information about the, um, 
you know, doing the uh, at home or on Zoom. And then we can incorporate that into our meeting. So as that information becomes available, we'll be able to, for those that may not be able to make it, we do have some things that are in play. And so we will notify you all of that moving forward. I have a question. Charlene, where do you live? Hillsburg. Okay. I was not the one who asked for it to be earlier. That no, was I asked the question, Mike, and I'm in Sonoma. Okay. I could pick you up if it's a problem. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> problem solved. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Carpooling is great. Also, just so you know, daylight savings begins on March 12th. Oh. It should be fine. So it, it should be is great. 7 p.m. in April. So it will be a non-issue. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, we are. Commissioner Doyle has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let this committee know that um, that Erica Thibault has been appointed officially as the library director. Um, I'm not sure that all of you knew that. So we're delighted, the commission is delighted to have made that appointment. And, um, and also, this is hot off the presses, we have a new Cloverdale commissioner. I can't tell you who it is <laughs> but, <laughs> because the commission doesn't know yet, but uh, we're making progress, and we hope that uh, we hope that we will have a Sonoma commissioner um, uh, shortly as well. Um, I can't make any promises about that, though. Um, and and also, uh, as, as I'm listening, I know that you're going to have a lot of uh, um, folks on the um, on the committee who are newer to it, and perhaps perhaps you might consider a training, or perhaps we might put together we might put together uh, an outline of how the committee was born, what you're supposed to do, um, the history and that sort of thing. Yes. Great. Yeah, Lisa and I have been discussing that. So you were right on track with that. Sarah? Yes, I just wanted to add my support to Deborah's idea as a new person. That would be really helpful to have an orientation and a training. And, and for me, I know some paper about all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I think you're all much more facile with uh, the information than I am as a new person. And if there are a number of us together that we could do that, it would be great. Mm -hmm. and, and while you are uh, a, a separate committee and we're all aware of that, um, it would be nice if you had a, a commission liaison agenda item so that I could report so that um, uh, uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time in the meeting, but we want to make sure that that we tell you what you need to know. Good idea. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Is there any other additional comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Nope. With that being said, we're going to adjourn the meeting by acclamation. Bye. Have a nice evening, everyone. Okay. Bye. Have a great Thank evening, you. everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you, Yvette. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. And welcome, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>